okay you might uh, uh, you know heard uh, so many times this topic like different levels of persistence right so one of the best and uh, you know good feature in a, a spark is persistence right you know very well so fault tolerance persistence are very very important and uh, one of the best feature in a spark so we generally have a different uh, levels of uh, uh, persistence when we do real time works or when we create an rdd or when we create any data frame uh, right due to persistence then uh, if there are any uncertain values or unexpected uh, uh, loss of the data then uh, the from the persistence we will able to retrieve very fast so in a chain of right when we create multiple uh, transformation logics right with multiple data frames so somehow if if some data got deleted or some step got uh, lost then uh, again it recompute from the beginning okay because you know right uh, spark completely do the uh, you know computation of, uh, you know when we trigger any uh, actions over it okay so until un until until unless we apply any action uh, though you return 100 those transformations or uh, that won't be executable okay so it's like a pipeline like uh, when we have a, some bore and water and uh, if you put some pipeline over there and uh, initially when you put pipeline definitely there may not be water in that pipe right so when you trigger a switch uh, then uh, uh, you know after uh, giving power then automatically uh, you know water will come uh, from the pipe so something like that here if you re, uh, if we correlate uh, this transformations actions in spark let us say pipe is transformations okay one pipe, one pipe, one pipe, like that. You are adding many pipes. That means many transformations. But ultimately, if you want to see results, or ultimately, if you want to see the water in, in our uh, expected area, so definitely we have to uh, trigger on this switch, right? So the same way, uh, here also, once we complete the transformations or transformation steps, uh, we have to uh, apply the actions. Then only we will see the output, something like that. Okay, so here, what happens? Let us say you return so much code, and it took uh, after applying. Let us say you have applied ten transformations and one action. Finally, you got your desired output. That is fine. But due to huge data, uh, you know, due to huge data, it took around fifteen to twenty minutes time. Okay, because it's supposed to calculate from the uh, beginning, right? Uh, you know, from the source file to till till end of the last transformations right so uh, what happened if the data got lost or due to some reason we didn't get a desired output okay so again we have to recompute it right it will take a lot of time so to to save some time or to you know to uh, we can say to get a better performance of our query what generally will do uh, you know we may use uh, this persistence concept okay so uh, let us say just now you created right a data frame one. Let us say you have created one RDD, RDD one, uh, and uh, some AC dot text file you return, and uh, you loaded some file. Okay, an RDD created. Then from RDD, you have created a uh, uh, no two DF method. Okay, one data frame. So second data frame, you did some transformations and uh, transfer, uh, transformation, uh, okay, uh, like this. So you, you have applied many, uh, many transformations and uh, finally uh, you have created your 10th uh, 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 you know, data frame, okay. Now, uh, after you are, uh, you know, applying these transformations, then definitely you may apply some actions right then only you will get out so what will happen in the middle if some data lost here or here so it will recompute from the beginning so as i told you to recompute from the beginning to till end let us say it took half an hour time so due to some reason we lost the data here uh, this step again it will go back uh, to df2 uh, or it is supposed it, it it come from the beginning because once it got executed right uh, there not be any data here okay 
once df2 created you won't see data in rdd1 you once uh, once df3 created you won't see data in df2 right so due to some mission failure or cluster failure after uh, after uh, you know completing df9 df9 uh, in the process of uh, making df2 due to some reason we lost the data in df1 df9 then what will happen so ultimately it won't take from df df8 right it won't take from df8 because df8 doesn't have the data so uh, all the way it should go to rdd1 and then compute our df1 df2 df3 and then come to df9 then df10 so again at the same time it will take right so to to address that issue and get a performance if you think this step may fail or this, this step may take uh, more time than any other step then better you persist this right so what you will do df if you think this d8 is very important uh, uh, having many joins and all many joins output then what you do simply you do persist okay persist hope oh, you can use persistence okay so when you do persistence right even this while uh, making df10 if uh, df9 got lost uh, df9 lost the data then nothing worry because you no need to go to df rdd1 to rdd uh, df7 it directly taking uh, will take from this uh, you know step number 8 right this is where we may we may save lot, uh, we may save lot of time when we use persistence because the, we are going to store the data in memory or in the disk based on the methods that are available okay this is the major advantage of uh, persistence and uh, how many ways we have so we have almost uh, the, these are the popular ways uh, of uh, making a data persistence methods we can say uh, disk only let us say uh, you don't have the sufficient cluster memory then you can utilize disk only okay you can go through the uh, youtube or you can go through any other uh, material uh, or, or i can i can recommend you to go through uh, you know spark documentation and uh, read completely in detail how to apply these uh, persistence levels okay there you can see syntax okay so when you do disk only then enter this data will goes to disk and save it okay and uh, do you um, but uh, remember when you when you try to retrieve data from this disk right obviously it will take little time than the data in memory okay that you have to remember because when in the loss of uh, you know data right it will go to disk and collect this df8 data when you do persist in disk that is the uh, thing that we have to remember we generally won't go here if we have a sufficient memory in our cluster okay and the second method is memory and disk let us say by default all this persistence will be in happen in memory only okay okay memory and uh, uh, deserialized format partitions right when we create a partitions or when we do this type of methods then generally data will be stored in a partitions uh, concepts right so uh, let us say 10 partitions got created during this procedure okay then when we do memory only then by uh, automatically uh, it, this is the default method so uh, all the persistence uh, persistent data will be stored in memory okay so and if you let us say you have developed one application today but uh, after one two years the input data becoming huge but uh, cluster didn't uh, upgraded so there might be a chances where this memory may not be sufficient if you think that way then we have one more uh, way that is memory and disk okay memory and disk deserialized uh, you know jvm objects okay this uh, partitions data whatever uh, you know leftover partitions and that means the partitions which are not fitted into memory will store in disk in deserialized format okay when you when you give this explicitly this condition or this method but you know deserialization again will take when you read data again because uh, over the network data should be in serialized format right so when you try to read the data then and send through the network then the deserialized data will be serialized then it will flow again there is a time consuming process so if you think to avoid that also then you have to go this 
memory and disk serialized so data will be stored in this ser uh, serialized way so that uh, it's ready av available when we re we required okay this is uh, faster than this first one okay i explained already memory so this is a default uh, method and uh, but it is a deserialized way all uh, partitions will be uh, you know stored in a uh, jvm objects uh, but uh, when you give explicitly like memory only serialization then again this is a bit faster than this okay because the data is storing in a serialized method okay so these are the uh, the important concepts where in real time also generally we implement uh, it's completely project to project or requirement to re requirement it will change but these are one of the expected question interview as well